What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is Season 8, Week 12 of The Locker Room. The San Francisco Giantes are team building this week for Coach Z and the Columbus Chew. We have played against Columbus Chew one time this season, and we did net a win in that game. So our record against Coach Z is 1-0. When we were chatting, setting up the match, he said he will destroy all the proxies of the GBA. Uh, said that he's going to rain down a slew of pestilence upon me and that the Columbus Chew is gonna bring forth the dawn of a new era of misery to those who oppose the regime. So overall, nice guy. Nice guy. And really looking forward to this rematch. It is a big deal. We are going to battle pretty soon. Yeah, might as well just uh, get into this. Uh, talk first about my team. I'm gonna do this a little differently. Normally I talk about their 11 for a long time while you guys kind of wait for me to get to the team. This time I'm going to show you guys the team first, then go over his 11, and then we'll kind of delve into the sets that I'm bringing. So we're bringing Tefiti the Shaman, DMX, Atoxapex, Home Yowner the Mew, Proto the Mega Scizor, Remix the Ditto, and Headwit, Boom, the Blacephalon. And we are doing this to combat his 11 draft, his or her, 11 drafted Mon, which are Mega Gardevoir, Excadrill, Hippowdon, Porygon 2, Manaphy, Celebi, Sneasel, Blaziken, Mien Xiao, Weezing, and Fero. His two Zemons are Manaphy and Fero. So, a couple of changes since we last faced him. He has dropped Clefable and Mega Ampharos and picked up Mega Gardevoir and Hippowdon. I think those were very good changes for him overall. I think the addition of Sand makes Excadrill significantly more viable as a sweeper. And I think Mega Gardevoir is very hard to switch into. It's pretty good against my team in general, being able to pack the Shadow Ball coverage for my natural Psychic Resist. Hidden Power Fire for my Steel type, which is unfortunately four times weak to that. And um, it's overall kind of difficult, actually. If you look at my team, my 11 drafted mod, not just the six that I'm bringing, uh, a combination of Hidden Power Fire, uh, Hyper Voice Pixelated into being a fairy move, and Psychic actually is super effective against every member of my team. Uh, oh, I missed uh, Shadow Ball. So if he brings all four of those things, he has a super effective hit for every single member of my team. Fortunately, I do outspeed him with several members of my team, have priority that uh, will take him out, and uh, have pivot around ability. So a, a great switch for him or her, but at the same time, not something I'm not prepared for. So let's kind of look uh, deeper into some of his 11 Mon. Excadrill, and, and you guys know how I do, I tier them. Top tier things I'm almost positive he's gonna bring. Second one, uh, very effective, mon, possibly effective Mon, possibly difficult to deal with, or ones I just think are very likely to bring. Third row, things I won't be surprised if he brings, and fourth row, things that I'm maybe a little more surprised he'll bring or just things that I think are less likely brings than above. So in this circumstance, Fero should probably be in a tier all its own. It absolutely cannot break DMX whatsoever. He's got to know that, and I just don't think it's a likely bring. Uh, it's It doesn't have the strength, it doesn't have the speed, it doesn't have the bulk to really match up against anything. And in general, I think it's a wasted opportunity for him because he does have uh, multiple other effective mons for me. The Weezing, it's not that I don't think he'll bring it because it can be very effective against things like the Mega Scizor and the Haxorus. But I think it's too ineffective against multiple other members of my team. And I don't know that it does much for him, to be perfectly honest. So, uh, moving up to the row directly above that, we see the Mien Xiao, the Blaziken, and the Sneasel. Now, I put all three of these Mons on the same row because while they check very different Mons on my squad, they all kind of fit the same purpose, which is relatively frail, kind of fast, except for Blaziken, uh, and have the ability to either be quick reprisal, like retaliatory mons, or more setup based breaker mons. So, like the Mian Chao could be Reckless High Jump Kick, looking for a breaker set. The Sneasel and Blaziken could be Swords Dance. Or they could all kind of, you could slap a scarf on any of them. The Sneasel would most likely be there to stop a Haxorus from getting out of whack. So he'll probably sit on that. Uh, 
if I, if I brought a Haxorus, much like he did last time, the Blaziken is a good way to bait the Toxapex because it can run Earthquake, but I don't think it's a super likely bring uh, because he brought it last. He brought it last time and he knows that it had the potential to do something against the team that wasn't prepared for it, but now I'm prepared for it. So I don't think that's a likely bring. The Mian Xiao, uh, it pivots very well. U-turn regenerator is fantastic. Uh, really good. I actually really love Mian Xiao a lot. One of my favorite fighting types in the format in general. So, and, and you know, he could bring any of them. It largely depends on the other five or four mons that he brings to determine which one he thinks is most effective. And it also de depends on his game plan. Now, if you look at his team, you'll notice he has several mons that fit a bulk mode very well, very effectively. Things like uh, Defensive Celebi, the Porygon 2 with Eviolite, Hippowdon, and the Weezing, very bulky. Uh, and he can utilize those in conjunction with some combination of Manaphy, Excadrill, and Mega Gardevoir to have great breaker potential and very high bulk. I don't think he will do that because there's too many mons on my team that can set up and too many of those mons could be taken back by that. Because while the Hippowdon could run Whirlwind, it's not going to want to take, say, a devastating Drake from a plus one, plus one Haxorus. So, and and it just, it runs that risk. I think where he goes here is some semblance of balance or offense. And so to bridge that gap, uh, you could flex some of the second row to the third row, depending on what he wants to bring. I think Gardevoir is a mandatory bring, just with its coverage, having something for every member of my team, I think it's pretty much mandatory. It's very powerful, it's very hard to switch into. The Excadrill and Hippowdon combo, if he's going to bring one, it would be silly of him not to bring both. The Hippowdon doesn't actually match up well against my team. It can do okay at walling a Mega Scizor, and it can pack Fire Fang for it, but Fire Fang's not even a two-hit KO if I have some defense investment. And in general, it, it just it doesn't really do a whole lot other than maybe it gets up rocks or, or something along those lines. Its main purpose in this game, if it does come, is to set up the sand for the Excadrill, and Excadrill can be problematic. The Porygon 2, Porygon 2 is strange. Uh, I've played against it quite a lot in my several seasons in the GBA, and somehow it always manages to have a way of getting, just finding its its way into holes that are very difficult to deal with. So if it runs very bulky physically, then it's a problem for Proto. If it runs very bulky specially, it's a problem for Blacephalon. It has great coverage that I need to scout for and figure out. Uh, Shadow Ball potentially for the Mew, Hidden Power Fire potentially for the Proto, Thunderbolt potentially for the DMX, Ice Beam potentially for the Tefiti. <laughs> Just a lot for it. You know, it really can be kind of problematic. So Remix is a, a good way to figure out what it has quickly and to move on from there. Basically, I just need to, I need to be careful with it just to make sure that it doesn't pull any, maybe it's, you know, I've prepped a lot against it with a lot of different people. People have brought download sets against me before. It has trace, it has analytic to be more like a PZ. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, weird options for it. And it's, if you guys aren't like very familiar with P2, you should really check it out. Its move pool is deeper than you'd expect and it can uh, play a lot of, fit a lot of weird roles for that. So uh, definitely I'm gonna be on the lookout for that. Uh, part of my game plan here is to make sure that I don't get put into a situation where I can't break it because if that happens, you just, you just lose. Manaphy, my old friend. Um, you get a tail glow up, something dies. That's Manaphy for you in a nutshell. Uh, it can sometimes go for game with Calm Mind sets. And it can, it just in general, it can be relatively problematic. Celebi, oh also that's his Z-Mon. Manaphy being a Z-Mon uh, could present weird opportunities for him to do annoying things. So I do have a strat for that, I'll get to it in a second. Celebi, lots of support options, uh, offensive options, baton pass options, great support mon. Uh, my team has a lot of U-turn, he should probably be fearing that. 
Um, I was very surprised that he brought it last time, and in fact, the reason it's on tier 2 this time is because he didn't seem scared at all of the fact that half my team gets U-turn and could just 4 times super effective pivot around it. He didn't seem scared of that at all, so I'm, I'm not sure why, but uh, he brought it last time, and it could have done quite a lot against me depending on the set that it was, and it just happened to, unfortunately for him or her, did not really do a whole lot. So that's his 11 Mon, and I'll go a little bit more into the specifics of the uh, Mon I'm bringing now. Let's start off with Tefiti. You can kind of see it here. It's a physically defensive set, Leftovers, Natural Cure, with Seed Flare, Earth Power, Psychic, and Synthesis. This is a, a pretty standard set that you'd expect to see from a bulky Shaman. Um, its main goal here is to be a switch into the Excadrill, a switch into the Hippowdon, a switch into potentially the Mien Xiao. Um, and in general, it takes on those things very, very well. An amazing switch into the Excadrill. Uh, the Excadrill needs to pack Excisor to really be able to hit me for anything more than a potential four hit KO, three hit if he's running like banded adamant or something. And I mean, it, it really depends how he goes. If he's going to opt to run something weird like sand force banded, you know, then, uh, then it might have the potential to break me, but then it's very easily revenged uh, by many other members of my squad. So my anticipation is a, a relatively standard adamant life orb sand stream uh, sorry, uh, Sand Rush set, and I'm going to be on the lookout for Iron Head, Rapid Spin, Earthquake, and Xs, or that's my anticipation of his set, simply because of uh, what it needs in order to take on various mods on my team. EQ for DMX, uh, the strongest stab it can hit Homeowner with, which is Earthquake. Uh, Earthquake on the offensive set will do fine against Mega Scizor, the X Scissor attack to take on Shaman, Earthquake will take on Remix, Earthquake will take on Head Go Boom. So it does have something for everything. Uh, so I do need to be careful about that. But once I sort of know what it's got, I can make moves around it. And the uh, Leftovers actually does... Leftovers and this defensive investment does actually make it difficult for him to break Shaman. Uh, the one thing that's worth noting is that Synthesis... Uh, will only be healing 25%, so I can't actually uh, spam synthesis against a earth uh, against an X's or spamming Excadrill because I'll only be recovering 25%. So uh, definitely worth noting there. So if I if I come in, I'm gonna have to pop off something like a Seed Flare or an Earth Power right away just to either threaten that thing out or immediately get some damage on it. But that's Tefiti's main role. Tefiti is not a bad switch into Mega Gardevoir uh, because Seed Flare does hit it very hard and um, it doesn't have anything super effective for me outside of Hidden Power Fire, but the Hyper Voice is a better option anyway. DMX. Uh, I, I'm running just kind of a mixed spread just because... The, it's not supposed to wall anything. Things that it does wall, it doesn't need a ton of investment for. So I just want to kind of have a little something for anything. So we have Rocky Helmet on it to get chip against the Mian Shao, against the Blaziken, and against the Sneasel or the Fero, uh, or the Excadrill even. Uh, any of those physical sets get a little chip damage off on it. Scald to potentially net a burn against the Excadrill if it is foolish enough to want to switch in against me. Toxic Spikes I think will be very significant in this game, almost exclusively because I'm bringing Head Go Boom. And uh, with a Scarf, I will outspeed everything, barring a Scarfed Sneasel. That is his fastest Mon at 115. His next fastest is Mian Xiao 105. So if I run Timid Scarf, nothing on his team outspeeds me except a Scarfed Sneasel. I don't think he will bring a Scarfed Sneasel. And if he doesn't bring a Scarfed Sneasel, the only thing it could outspeed me with is an Ice Shard. It does not even two-hit KO me. Uh, it might after rocks. So uh, it, he will struggle to take down Blissafalon once I get uh, rolling with some of the special attack boosts. So he needs to be very uh, cognizant of that. 
And so getting some toxic spikes up will very much threaten that. Uh, another benefit of it is that when Excadrill does come in, because as I mentioned, it does have something for every member of my team. If it's going to want to first click Rapid Spin, that's okay with me. That really is. Um, so, because I can either net Rocky Helmet damage against it with DMX, or it gives me a free switch into Tefiti, who then is not threatened by the two-hit KO and can pop off some high damage moves like the Seed Flare. Um, we have Haze because this could very well be an important switch into the Manaphy to prevent it from getting set up going against me and then recover uh, just to potentially recover stall anything that might be necessary keep myself healthy if i need to we have home yowner the mew running a defensive set with speed investment he's got psychic will-o-wisp taunt and roost now the defense investment and the speed investment what this allows me to do is outspeed any variety of blaziken jolly or adamant uh, and potentially kill it with psychic or roost stall it if it's trying to spam flare blitz against me and that will cause the flare blitz to eventually take it down itself if it's scarfed it cannot two hit ko me i believe there's maybe a five percent chance if he has rocks that he can two hit ko me so uh, i'm in a good spot there if he's scarfed adamant that is the only case uh, that he will outspeed me otherwise uh, i haven't beat by two points and the defense investment allows me to be a decent switch in, backup switch in to the Excadrill, who um, has the potential to two hit KO me, but might get burned in the process. Uh, and I don't believe I outspeed unless it's adamant if the sand is not up. Uh, but Willow is a great way for me to spread some status on things and potentially neuter their overall effectiveness. Psychic there, of course, because it makes me a reliable switch in. This thing can switch in against Weezing for days and does not care, uh, which is very helpful. It's good against the Mian Xiao. Best thing Mian Xiao's got for it is knockoff, which uh, doesn't even two hit KO if it had the full power against my item both times. So it loses, I lose my leftovers. That's all right, and then all it can do really is U-turn, and I can just easily roost off the damage or willow it. Uh, the only thing is potentially coming in against a Mian Xiao, getting U-turned, and then getting Pursuit trapped by the Sneasel. But of course, I would just willow it, um, try and either roost away the the potential that it clicks Pursuit against me, or uh, or just try and gamble it and switch out. The burn could be really helpful against almost anything, to be perfectly honest, but I need to bear in mind that its highest effectiveness is against the Excadrill, which cannot be poisoned by the Toxic Spikes, because I am hoping to get Toxic Spikes up early in this match. I would like the poison for numerous things, not the least of which the Porygon 2, the Manaphy, and the uh, Hippowdon and Gardevoir. The Mega Scizor set, we're running a bulky Swords Dance Roost set with Bullet Punch and Super Power. After one Swords Dance, I can Oko, especially defensive varieties of Porygon 2, Roost off uh, potential damage from that. With the investment I have, I do not get one hit KO by a Hidden Power Fire from the Mega Gardevoir, and I do still potentially one hit KO it with the Bullet Punch. Um, so this defense investment means I'm less fearful of just random fire coverage tacked on things that shouldn't have it, like Aka Berry Natural Gift on the Sneasel, which otherwise I wall outright. It cannot touch me. Uh, Proto's job here is really dependent on what he brings. Once the Mega Gardevoir goes down, and if I have a poison on that Porygon 2, I'm really not that worried about what he could possibly have for me and Scizor becomes a little more expendable. The Remix is a tack all fill in here. And the main reason here being if he opts to go and heavily stack on the specially offensive side of things, opting to run almost no specially defensive mon, or sorry, uh, no physically offensive mon, then my team might struggle a little bit. If he's running Guard of War, um, a highly offensive, specially 
offensive P2, Manaphy, offensive, like nasty plot Celebi. Then I'm sort of, I'm in a weird place because I'm not running a ton, like there is some tacked on special defense here and there, but I'm not particularly specially defensive and he might, it, it, it being that way is not necessarily problematic for me. What is problematic is if he removes my answer for another Mon with the Mon that's not supposed to check it. So uh, an example being, I'm in against the Excadrill, Excadrill takes out Tefiti, and now I don't have an answer for the Manaphy. Something like that, for example. Um, that's what Remix is for. Remix steps in and fills the role of neutralizing or uh, providing a check to all of those other mons. Manaphy is an amazing example. Manaphy doesn't beat Manaphy, but one thing that's important about Manaphy to make sure that I don't let happen to me is that it sets up and takes two lives instead of just one. So Ditto can come in against the Manaphy and learn its set. Very useful. Um, I can figure out its coverage. Manaphy is hemorrhaged by uh, four move pool syndrome because if it wants to be able to take on proto it's got to have hidden power fire if it wants to be able to take on uh tefiti it's got to have ice beam if it wants to be able to take on dmx it's got to have psychic now it could run all of th all three of those things uh, but then it doesn't really have anything for itself so remix can come in and start popping off psychics against it i just need enough chip against it that headwind boom can come in and revenge it with uh, with Shadow Ball. Or um, if I realize it doesn't have Psychic, then DMX can come in and just spam Haze against it. The only thing that needs to happen with the Manaphy is I don't let it get boosts and behind a sub. So if I play aggressively enough against it, um, registering myself to the possibility that I do lose a Pokemon, but don't let it uh, set up against me and beat me down, then I have no problem. This is another reason why Toxic Spikes are so crucial, because if I get them up, that Manaphy cannot set up Sweep and beat me. Uh, it's 100 base speed, which means it does not outspeed the Head Go Boom, even if it's a Scarfed set, uh, because I am a Scarfed Head Go Boom. So let's move on to the Head Go Boom. Flamethrower, Shadow Ball, Psychic Trick. Uh, my main sweeping potential depends on what he's got left. I'm really thinking that Flamethrower is the winner for me. The things that stop a Flamethrower endgame sweep are Manaphy and Blaziken. Both of those strike me as mid-game, not late-game win conditions for him, so they're likely to come out early. If I can eliminate them and I can get in with something, uh, maybe weaken and then intentionally die with another Mon and then come in with Head, go boom, head Went Boom, uh, and net a kill with flamethrower, get my plus one uh, attack boost, I am off to the races and there's nothing he can do about it. So that's really what I'm looking for here. In order to activate that win condition though, uh, I definitely need to get a poison on Manaphy and Porygon to weaken them just a little bit or potentially remove them altogether. And then I'm in a really good position. Um, Headwent Boom is a great way to scare out the Excadrill. Um, it's a great way to scare out the Celebi. It uh, is powerful enough just to, without boosts, just by sheer nature of my offensiveness and their paper frailty, it's strong enough to take out the Blaziken and the Mien Xiao and the Sneasel uh, with little to no uh, cause or care. Remix, I want to talk about a little bit more here, because I did mention that it's sort of the glue that holds together a lot of my... Um, it, it becomes an emergency button for me. It is amazing as Mega Gardevoir, because the things he has that resist Hyper Voice don't resist it enough to take multiple of them. Um, the Excadrill doesn't want to take two, can be two hit KO'd. The... Weezing cannot take two of them, will get two hit KO'd. He really struggles against it, unless he's rocking some assault vest somewhere. So I'd really love to become a, uh, a Mega Gardevoir with the Ditto and just really punish it. I need to figure out, based on when Mega Gardevoir comes out, my way to work around it. What I really want to do is get Proto in, but I need to do so safely. I can't just hard switch it in, turn one that I see the Mega Gardevoir, because it's too easy to predict that move and just click HP fire. 
So what I'm thinking is a better move is DMX because Fairy is a very safe neutral click. He can he, he will think in his head, I should click Hyper Voice, something dies, unless it's DMX, and then I outspeed it and get to click Psychic. That's what I imagine his thought process would be. So I can go DMX on it to absorb the hit of that uh, Hyper Voice, and then anticipating the Psychic, I can go Hard Proto, and now all of a sudden I'm in can scare it out with the bullet punch, can potentially set up with the swords dance, kind of depending on where we're at in the game. I might even be able to double again into Remix, become the Mega Gardevoir, who even if it stays in, is likely uh, against a proto, is likely clicking HP fire. I take very little. I can ma make a massive chunk against it with its own hyper voice. Uh, I can net the two hit KO where he cannot net the one hit KO. I will outspeed and then again potentially off to the races with that. So um, Remix really does set up a lot of opportunity for me. I'm just thinking ahead of time about how I'm going to work around these mons that do potentially have coverage for everything. And the answer to that is they have coverage individually for everything and not one move fits all. He doesn't really have any of those. The best one move fits all thing he has against me is potentially... I mean, all of course, the team that I've uh, created this season doesn't have a great answer to Dark, but the mons that could pack Dark are Foul Play on the Porygon 2 and Knock Off, excuse me, Knock Off Pursuit on the Sneasel, and both of those don't massively threaten Proto. Um, so I, I need to kind of look around that. There is Knock Off on things. Uh, he's got Knock Off possibility also. But uh, yeah, let me guys know what you think of the team. I feel pretty good about it, but it's always one of those things that whenever you have a team that's built to answer specific elements of another team that have difficult things to answer. Mega Gardevoir is hard to answer. If Coach Z plays right, he plays right around my... Uh, my, my checks and answers. If I lose a few things, uh, that's a path to an L. So, um, on my notes here, I have my path to victory is that I need to maintain Mew and Toxapex, uh, Mew, Toxapex, or Proto to have an answer, have a way to deal with Porygon 2 because I will fail to be able to do so if it comes down to it not being weakened and just head go boom remix and or Tafiti. Tafiti would literally, at that point, just be fishing for special defense drops with the Seed Flare. I don't want to play that game. Uh, Manaphy, I can't let it get behind a sub and start setting up. I can't let it... Uh, Tafiti's a really good switch in against it. It can survive a two-hit KO from the Ice Beam. However, it cannot survive an Ice Beam into a Sub-Zero Slammer. So I've got to play around that by potentially switching into Tafiti once and then scouting for the Sub-Zero Slammer going straight into DMX, something like that, uh, pivoting around it. Uh, I can't let... My, my path to victory is taking out Mega Gardevoir. Um, it's outsped and killed by Blacephalon. Bullet Punch Scizor uh, after one turn, one tick of poison damage, even if it's got some bulk in it. Uh, and its fastest mon is Sneasel. So once that's gone, I know that a lot of the rest of my mon can really clean up the game. My path to losing is, of course, if both Mew and Toxapex die and Proto is too weak to take on the Porygon 2. The Scizor and Blacephalon die before Mega Gardevoir. Um, the... Shaman dies before Manaphy is weakened, and in all of those situations, except the Porygon 2, Ditto is my emergency answer. So, Scizor and Blacephalon are both die, and Gardevoir is still up. I gotta get Ditto in safely, and I gotta take it out with a head-to-head -head hyper voice battle. The, um, the Manaphy is a problem. It's gonna have to go blow for blow with something, either Tafiti, uh, maybe the Mew, maybe the proto <laughs> um or maybe ditto itself it, it's gonna have to go blow for blow because if i want to outspeed it and kill it that's got to come from ditto or head went boom because i can't bullet punch it with the proto it'll take next to nothing from that uh potentially i can go blow for blow with mew uh, take a surf hit it back with a psychic something like that uh, Tafiti can very much threaten it with Seed Flare. I just need to be careful for Sub-Zero Slammer and potential sets that are uh, gonna set up in order to take on Tafiti. So that's my, that's the whole game for me, guys. Uh, this is a long one, but let me know what you think of my team and if you would have done anything different in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys next time.